Welcome back to the Plant Power Podcast. My name is Ian Beckles, and we're hanging out inside today in the Dignitary Tea and Kava House. We have a little situation with the weather outside, so uh, we're inside hanging out. So I told you guys when we started this podcast a long time ago that uh, we're going to talk about plant power and what it does to our world and how it helps us out. But I also want to bring in some experts that know a lot more than I do, which is not really not hard to do, to be honest with you. But I have my guy right here, Mike Smith uh, from Farm to Shelf. Uh, first of all, how are you, bro? How are you doing, brother? Doing great. Thank you so much. How's life treating you? Doing well. Doing well. Halfway through the week, right? It helps. <laughs> it, do, it does help. Now, uh, you came through to Dignitary Tea and Kava House uh, the other day with, with, with your lovely wife, yes. uh, soliciting your, your products. Tell me what is Farm to Shelf? What is it exactly? Uh, so we are a collective of hemp farms and manufacturers of wellness products from across the U.S. Um, we really started over in Oregon um, with about six to seven smaller farms with really the mission to spread education on what is hemp versus cannabis, mm -hmm. how can we integrate it into our lives, and not only teaching stores, but consumers as well along the way. So you represent you represent farmers then? Yes, farmers and manufacturers. Um, you know, so what I mean by that is the people making the tinctures or the gummies. Okay. You know, the farmers are really good at growing the flower. Sure. Doesn't mean that they're masters at making a gummy. So sure. there are multiple steps along the way. And what's important to us is that they're formulating with the purpose, there's mm -hmm. efficacy there. It's not just a, a product with a label on it. Sure. Now, what is the average hemp farmer? So you're not a farmer yourself then? No, my background was in the extraction side and consumer okay. products. So the, no, the average Average hemp farmer sets out growing hemp. I've talked to a couple of hemp, you know, farmers from San Antonio. I'll be honest with you, they were great farmers, but they really didn't know how to sell their products. So is, is that where they're coming into an issue? A hundred percent, especially a small farmer. They don't really have the, the time and the resources or the people to really get their products across the U.S. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a lot of time and money spent into these products and. Um, so that's where we saw a gap in the market. Um, so we created Farm to Shelf and we've been going door to door to CBD stores for the last year and a half trying wow. to push these products and mm -hmm. educate. And now we've landed over in Tampa and mm -hmm. trying to bring it to the East Coast. So tap, you're, now you're situated here in Tampa. You, you live here now? We do. We do okay. live here, yeah. Uh, so what have you seen from CBD and I guess hemp in general? How's it been growing in this country? How's it been growing in this country? So there's a whole new wave of these new cannabinoids that have come out. Uh, Delta 8, Delta 10, mm -hmm. HAC, THCO. And, you know, over in Oregon at first, you know, we were so focused on CBD and full spectrum products and really the medicinal side of it mm -hmm. that we had to adjust our whole market and our whole plan um, because the market's really been split into do you want to get high or do you want your medicine? Correct. Especially as you get into states where there is already a medical or recreational program, um, you kind of have a different tone, a different kind of light on cannabis. In sure, absolutely. Um, so we're trying to help people realize that, hey, hemp actually is cannabis. Mm -hmm. It's just at a lower potency level. Um, and cannabinoids, when you isolate a cannabinoid, cannabinoid down to a certain level, mm -hmm. it's all the same, sure. right? So it's how much are you taking of it? What are you taking? Um, and when are you taking it? Okay. So as somebody who indulges in uh, THC and a certain, quite a bit of it, uh, I mean, what benefits could I have from some of the other cannabinoids? I, like a, CBD is in THC, correct? When I'm, when I'm smoking my THC. So why would I need CBD if I'm smoking THC? So they call it the entourage effect. Mm -hmm. So pretty much when cannabinoids work together along with other things in the plant like terpenes mm -hmm. and other minerals, um, it just it bolsters the effect. Okay. Um, so why would you want different ones is because they all have an individual purpose. So for instance, CBN, CB1 mm -hmm. and is, is popular, but it's very mm -hmm. often overlooked because that's, that's, it's technically degraded THC. Okay. Um, and it's the nighttime cannabinoid. Right, so it actually puts you into a deeper REM cycle. It doesn't put you to sleep, mm -hmm. but that's something you can incorporate into your nighttime cannabinoid intake. Okay. Um, CBG is really great for inflammation in the gut. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't necessarily want to get too stoned or too high, you can find products that are high in CBG mm -hmm. and kind of help different benefits sure. that you're looking for. So, like the CBN and CBG. Um, you you want to look for a product. So if you're looking for something that's good for your gut health, look for more CBG. Something for more at nighttime, look for CBN. That's, that's, that's as easy as that. 
Yeah, and then it really comes down to there's full spectrum products, okay. and then there's broad spectrum, and there's isolate products. Uh, full spectrum is really going to have all of them, mm -hmm. but now with science, we can really formulate and pinpoint how much of each cannabinoid is within a product, sure. very giving it a purpose, and then again adding in whether it be a medicinal mushroom or an herb, mm -hmm. um, anything to really kind of help that given purpose. Sure. So you guys are basically pushing anything from from the earth, pretty much. Yeah, it you know? all started off cannabis, and then from mm -hmm. there, it kind of we realized that hey, mushrooms can really fall into this herbal-based products, mm -hmm. kratom, kava. Um, so why not kind of bring it all together? Sure. Um, so that's why, like recently, we we partnered up with Odyssey Elixirs from Fort Lauderdale, medicinal Delicious mushroom drinks. drinks right? Delicious drinks, so, absolutely. No, no, no cannabinoids in them, mm -hmm. but it's still holistic medicine. So how? Oh, I, it, I, it seems like mushrooms are where cannabis was maybe. 10 years ago to where people are kind of leery of it but they notice benefits and you know people are just kind of figuring it out now like in 10 years from now i think it's going to be where cannabis was 10 years ago maybe i hope so yeah. i mean you say shrooms and people are like oh you I'm are, like, yeah. how high am i, I gonna get trip? it i you get know? it yeah it's, but there's all kinds just like each cannabinoid has its own purpose so mm -hmm. does each mushroom okay um and once you kind of learn how to use your mushrooms um i think that's where you're really can take off from sure that. so you when you're saying mushrooms you're talking are you talking about psilocybin are you talking about stuff that you that you're like in the odyssey drinks what are you talking about when you're, when you're saying mushrooms yeah so lion's mane cordyceps okay. reishi maitake chaga um mushrooms that you would see at farmers markets mm -hmm. um mushrooms that you can cook with um some of them don't taste really well so you don't necessarily want to cook but sure. you can find it in tinctures or capsules um, not the psilocybin ones. Okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure there's some people saying boo right now, but that's okay. That's it's all good. Not yet. Yeah, not, <laughs> not yet, and it's, it'll it'll happen soon, hopefully. Now we we um we're gonna have a cannabis doctor in our building here real real soon. Okay, and uh, you know we push people to get their medical card, but if there's there's some people that just don't have the ability to. Okay, yeah. for whatever particular reason. So, I mean, that's where you guys come into play. I'm going to ask you, do you have your medical card? I do. You do? Yes. But you still obviously are, are utilizing a lot of your other, your other products then. Because they all have their purpose, right? Sure. So um, that's like when it comes to Delta 9, that's the famous cannabinoid that gets you high mm -hmm. out, of, out of cannabis or weed per yep. se. Well, now we can get it out of hemp. Uh, in low doses and kind of a micro dose. So I like consuming hemp derived Delta 9 during the day. Okay. It's five milligrams at a time and nice slow work your way up. Mm -hmm. um, but for there are other reasons, there's concentrates, there's higher potency Delta 9 THC flower mm -hmm. that I can go when I'm in pain or have that need sure. for. Now tell me some of the different products you guys sell uh, and different ways people can get CBD and Delta 8 and Delta 9. You guys have a lot of a lot of different products. Yeah, and we actually like to break it out by like product type or mm -hmm. um, what we kind of call like your purposes. Mm -hmm. um, so we have like our sesh type of products and those are going to be pre-rolls, um, whether it be individual or via pack, mm -hmm. uh, a vape cartridge. Um, a dab even, mm -hmm. that's kind of getting very popular. Um, on the edible side, um, you can do a caramel, you can do a cookie, you can do uh, pet treats even. Mm. Um, when it comes to topicals, you can do a salve, a cream, mm -hmm. a face serum, a bath salt. Um, I mean, you name it. I've even seen beef jerky with Delta 8 in it. So Beef jerky with Delta 8. <laughs> so bath salts with Delta 8 in well, it. I've seen it with CBD, not so okay. much Delta 8. CBD has some uh, skin benefits sure, um, sure. and calming and relaxation. So. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, so like what is your in your regimen, like a daily regimen? Like for myself, um, I like to take some kind of CBDs in the morning for mm -hmm. my aches and pains. Yeah. And then, you know, then I'm through the day. I'm doing my little, my, my little pens and stuff like that and little THC. Do, do you have mushrooms? Is it implemented in your everyday, you know, you know, you know repertoire? A hundred percent. Okay. Um, so uh, lion's mane and cordyceps are typically what I start my morning off with. Um, give me a little bit of focus on my memory. Mm -hmm. um, a little Is that bit in lieu of coffee? If I may in ask? lieu of coffee. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Good. Yep. Some natural energy. Mm -hmm. um, I also like to take a little bit of delta nine mm -hmm. in the morning, just a little bit of five milligrams. Okay. Um, these gummies that we have also have twenty five milligrams of CBD in there. Okay. So it's a nice full spectrum offset. So I kind of get you know it just feel good throughout the day but you're not stoned at the mm -hmm. same time sure um, I do use a vaporizer cartridge throughout the day okay. um, as needed see especially CBD ones mm -hmm. if you get a little nervous that's a great one to hit sure um, if you have stomach pain a CBG one so it's it's kind of crazy you're kind of sewer in the sense yeah where no you doubt. can kind of line up all right what product do I mm -hmm. want but it can 
it can get expensive after a while. So you got to learn see what that. works for you. And it's become science, it seems like. And then CBN towards the end of the night, obviously. Yeah, and, and what's important is everyone's different. So you may be try one milligram level, and it may not do anything. Mm -hmm. But that might mean you're not taking enough of it. Okay. You're not taking it at the right time. Um, I mean, sometimes like cannabinoids can take up to two weeks for your body to absorb like vitamins. Sure. So I can't tell you how many times people were like, oh, I'm not feeling this, but they actually didn't realize it was doing something until after they yeah. stopped. Famous last words with edibles. I didn't feel anything. Yeah. <laughs> and I took another one. <laughs> exactly. Famous last words, yes. I've heard that many, many times. And that's a scary thing with THCO that's mm -hmm. out there now because that's a delayed reaction. So you can sit there and smoke a vape pen and mm -hmm. not feel anything for up to an hour. But if you don't know that, you can sit there and continue to chief away. So you just really got to know what you're consuming, mm -hmm. how much you're consuming, and why you're consuming it. So, so talk to me about THCO. You said it's something you smoke, obviously, but it, it's... Is it delaying? It delays? Time release, I guess? So it's in THCO is technically it's an acetate. So um, they take CBD, they convert it into, very, there's a couple different ways of doing it, but very often they convert it into Delta-8 mm -hmm. and then from there into Delta-8 into a THCO. Okay. Um, because it's an acetate, that means your liver takes longer to actually process the cannabinoid. Mm -hmm. um, so you can take it by smoke, uh, via distillate, um, or via a gummy. Um, one thing I'd like to point out, it's the only one that's not a naturally found cannabinoid. All the other ones, Delta-8, okay. Delta-9, CBD, CBG, they can naturally be found in the plant. Mm -hmm. THCO cannot. Okay. However, its potency and its effects are very strong. Um, so just be careful when you're taking it. Mm -hmm. Is that still makes it, is it still natural though if it's not from the plant? Is that still so, natural or just synthetic? It, so there's this whole thing out there is it, it goes through a synthesis process, yeah. mm -hmm. but it's not synthetic. Mm. Um, it's a technicality almost, it, you know it, what I mean? It is. Uh -huh. um, but it's a cannabinoid and okay. pe people are driving off it. If, if the people that want to get high are the ones mm. consuming that type of cannabis. Sure, absolutely. There's not much. I'm not going to say there's no medicinal benefit, but there's not much understood about it. What is your, what's your background? You're an intelligent guy. What's your background? Uh, previous to this, um, I was in customer service, really. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I did logistics for a relocation company, sure. and then uh, I had some friends that went out and had an opportunity to start a hemp extraction facility. Mm -hmm. So it was a team of six of us mm -hmm. and spent about six years there. And um, we mostly helped small farmers convert their flour into biomass. Okay. And to be honest with you, learning this was because I was stuck in the lab for six years and you're just, you're head yeah. into it yeah. and hands on with it. Well, that sucks being in the labs. It gets, uh, it gets boring, you know what I mean? You gotta get out and about around the, the people. And that's why we're here. Right, there right? You go. So who, who, who is Farm the Shelf looking for? Who are you looking to, to sell to? Uh, yeah, so um, CBD stores, mm -hmm. um, kava shops, um, anybody that's really concerned about finding wellness products mm -hmm. for their consumers. I mean, there's a lot of smoke shops out there that have the, the, the same inventory, really. They really do. Um, and we're, all of our products are full panel tested for all the bad things that could possibly be in there. Mm -hmm. And we want to find people that care about that. Yeah, no doubt. Um, well, that's beautiful because that's what we're trying to do in here. It's about, we're about kava, we're about kratom. We're also trying to be about wellness and people doing the right things for their bodies and not putting crap into your bodies. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. And yeah. I thank you for putting this out there because mm -hmm. this is a very unique environment. And I think that once people realize that you have a good source of education mm -hmm. and a reliable source, mm -hmm. I think that will continue this movement forward. Well, let's help and uh, let's help each other's brands as we go. And uh, hopefully we'll be doing a lot of business with you uh, along the way. And uh, thank yeah. you, brother, thank for you your so time. Much. I appreciate it. So Farm the Shelf, uh, Mike and his wife could be knocking on your door any second now if you have a kava <laughs> bar or, or a smoke shop or a CD, uh, CBD shop or something like that. And uh, very soon we're going to be talking to you guys about bringing your Odyssey uh, mushroom drinks and those kind of things in here. I appreciate Good it. Good stuff. All right, don't go anywhere. We'll be back. We'll be uh, talking to my girl, Nicole, from uh, Kira Lee. So we'll be back on the other end with a little Plant Power podcast. We'll be back. I want to thank Mike for joining us uh, on Plant Power Podcast. And uh, now we're going to flip the script a little bit. We've had Nicole on the show before. And I'd like to introduce her again as Miss Nicole Marangoli from Cure Leaf. How yes. are you, young lady? I'm good. You doing well? I'm doing well. Awesome. So, uh, you know, we, we talk periodically, you mm -hmm. know, here trying to make sure we're getting some things going with Cure Leaf and, and the Dignitary Kava House. So what's what's new with Cure Leaf? What's happening right now? What's oh, new? Oh, man. Busy, busy, busy. Um, 
so we're we have our ratio um, by its launching this Friday. Um, it's a one to one, mm -hmm. sixty percent CBD, okay. fifty percent THC. Okay. So that's something that's we haven't had edible okay. wise. So that'd be cool. So your edibles, the, the new edibles are coming <laughs> out then. Okay. And what yeah. what are they called? The uh, ratio. Ratio. ratio bites. So it's called ratio bites. Yeah. So I've not seen these yet. Then. No, no. But you've had ratio tinctures. Ratio or drops, tinctures. Okay. Like ratio drops, mm -hmm. but not chew, like edibles. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna be stronger than than the other ones, or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I'm, I'm, I take a handful of the other ones now. I mean, I'm, I'm, <laughs> let's let's be honest with everybody right here. Nobody's listening. All right. <laughs> How many edibles do you take to get you feeling good? How many edibles do you take? One. Okay. Well. <laughs> I don't need much. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Uh, you, we'll just say I don't take one. Take a few. You take a few. Uh, take a few. More than a few. Okay, right? then. Yeah. A few. We'll, 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 leave, we'll, leave it, we'll leave it at that. But no, literally, I got to a point where I think I was getting, my tolerance was getting too high. Yeah. So I quit it. Stopped doing, you know, edibles for a little bit. And sure, then I came sure. back and now I'm back to. Uh, a good? Kind of normal. Kind of normal. Ka kind of normal. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um,. Once again, I'm I'm always heading to Cureleaf, and you know we're we're gonna figure out a way to get some kind of a dignitary discount going. But I'll be honest with you, every time I go to Cureleaf, it's forty or fifty percent off. Yeah, we got so the deals. I don't know what kind of dignitary deal we're gonna give if you guys are always <laughs> giving forty or fifty percent off. Like, yeah, is th that's a regular thing? Like, I, I I go mostly on Wednesdays. I think because of Wednesdays you get more double points, points yep. get double points, mm -hmm. but. Most days it's forty fifty percent off at Cure Leaf. I mean, it's just the market right now. I mean, we're we're competing, wow. so it's. I'm, but I mean, we have the best deals. And no doubt about that. <laughs> the best deals, the best flower, the best situations. Mm -hmm. I think the the nicest people working there. No doubt about that. Now. You know, I'm, I'm definitely going to be involved with some of the grand openings that have been going on. So what are some of the grand openings you guys got coming up in the near future? Yeah, so next week we have um, Bradington mm -hmm. um, opening up the second Bradington store um, and also uh, Inglewood. Okay. And then following that week, we are also opening, um, we're having a grand opening from Midtown, Tampa. Mm -hmm. And then um, also down south, I think tomorrow we're opening our Pembroke um, grand opening as well. And that'd be number what? Tomorrow? Yeah. 46? 40, 46. I can't, I, I don't, I think so. <laughs> I remember when I first started, you know, doing these podcasts way back when. Yeah. You, you guys were at like eight. Five. Six. Five and six and seven. Yeah. And every time I did, the podcast it seemed to go up two or three. And now you guys are getting close to, to 50. Now, Cure Leaf in general, I heard is the biggest dispensary in the country. We is, are. That, is that true? Oh, yeah, yeah. So like, it was crazy because on 420, um, New Jersey became, you know, adult Correct. use, Correct. and clearly was was popping. It was busy. I, bet. I yeah. mean, someone was in line uh, at 1 a.m. waiting for it to open. So the next day. Yeah. I've heard it was they pretty were crazy there in yeah. New Jersey. Yeah. You been in New Jersey? I, I have been to Jersey. Yeah, not yeah. a whole lot Briefly. else to do but uh, <laughs> hang out and wait for some weed. Yes. <laughs> in New Jersey, that's what I would do at one o'clock in the morning. I was actually there for a little bit, and uh, mm -hmm. I'd be waiting in line, uh, waiting for my weed for sure. Now, so we're here in Florida. Um, we're still waiting for everything to get legalized. And I, from yeah. what I hear through the grapevine, it's going to be happening here real, real soon. Um, but tell us about some more of the products that, like the live, yeah. the live res, the live resin. Live rosin. Rosin, yes. Yeah, live rosin. Now, um, is it resin and rosin? Yes. Okay, so before we even start that, What's you the know difference? the difference between the two? Yeah. Okay, tell us the difference between resin and rosin, because I do not know. So, how I describe resin, it's like if you like smoking flour, um, but in a vape form. Okay. So, they flash freeze it, it's extracted live. Okay. So, that's why the live comes in. Sure. Um, and and that'd the, be dabbed then, normally? No, you, that's in a vape. That'd be in a vape form. In a vape, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the rosin is bubble hash so it's just keep and that's pressed okay. and extracted and then that's how you get your and that's concentrate you, that's what you dab yes you can dab. yeah okay. you can dab yeah like I, I think i thought they were the same word all the time right. resin it's okay you wouldn't be the first <laughs> no I'm the, i definitely won't, won't resin, be. rosin you know uh, absolutely absolutely <laughs> so is that so which one is newer at for us the newest one is rosin is rosin yeah and now we have the concentrates readily available at most of the dispensaries now okay so excellent. It, before it was a few but now it's all over okay yeah and, and the rso you guys have had that for for a while now yeah is it's rick simpson oil mm -hmm. now is that a specific it's obviously somebody's name but does every dispensary have rso yeah 
But, I, well, not, I, I wouldn't say, I don't know. I don't, I, I can't answer that sure. definitely, mm -hmm. but I do know that most dispensaries will, will carry RSO. Okay. Um, it's very concentrated. No doubt. Disclaimer, very. don't do it if you've never done cannabis before. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good disclaimer. It is a good disclaimer because, you know, they say, say you just need a little uh, grain of uh, rice or something like that. Yep. And uh, it'll, it'll get you right. But it'll, it's very, uh, we'll say it's very calming. I mean, that's one way to put it. That's one way, absolutely. <laughs> now, we're, we're working on doing some cool things and collaborating. Yeah. Um, you know, we have an event hopefully coming up here that we're put, we've been putting together. Yeah. Um, you know, I've put some, i got some really cool people. Um, and, you know, we actually, I was just sitting there talking to your guy, uh, Austin from Cannabis Doc. Yeah. And they're going to have a place here in the building, which is that's very, exciting. very, very, very exciting. Yeah. Another thing we, I was, I want to talk to you about getting done, and I think we talked about this in the past, was maybe making this, uh, you know, dignitary call the house a drop-off place. Mm -hmm. Now, does Cure Leaf have drop-off places before? I've, I've heard that before. Like delivery, like delivery people, places. We, yes, it is possible. Uh -huh. Right. Um, okay. Definitely, definitely possible. Sure. And I, I never thought about this before, but like I have buddies of mine who are still funny about going to a dispensary. Mm -hmm. There's still people like that out there. You know what I mean? I would think. If there is a CEO, some maybe some CEOs wouldn't want to see them uh, in their car in front of the dispensary. That still happens, right? Well, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that want to be discreet about it. Correct. Right? Like a lot of people that work, I don't know, um, in a bank or sure, places where it's more federally mm -hmm. overlooked. So you can't, you know, they have to look at their statements, Correct. making sure it has nothing, you know, weed related on it. Absolutely. So I get it. So people, but we offer delivery. Oh, so. And there's delivery too. Mm -hmm. So, like, I personally have never got the delivery, and I swear to you, I'm gonna do it this week just to you experience just gotta it. You do it. Just to experience it. Yeah. So, it's just like uh, half baked where the guy pulls up on a, on a bike and delivers your weed. That's like New York, but but, but, that, but we, it, we work towards that. Well, <laughs> like, I mean, like Uber Eats, but Uber your weed. No doubt, but <laughs> Florida's not exactly a good place for for bicycles, though. You no. know what I mean? Oh yeah. You def definitely definitely need cars. Mm -hmm. So, is there is there a charge for delivery for Cure Leaf? E, under a certain amount, yes. Mm -hmm. I think it was 125, and uh, over 125, it's free. Okay. Um, they do free next day. Um, oh. but the mark, the car's unmarked. Um, for I our safety, say yeah, yeah, of for course. our safety as workers, but also for the, for the patients. Okay. Um, because you don't know what neighbor or person, that you know, you you just want to make sure that it's as discreet as possible. As possible. Well, that is true, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, where did you get in contact with with Austin from Cannabis Doc? I mean, you you gave me his his number and his name. Mm -hmm. uh, you were like, he's just you know, this really sharp young kid. I sat, I sat down. Emily and myself sat down with him, and I compared him almost to Mark Zuckerberg. This was a really sharp thinking. I don't mean crazy like Mark Zuckerberg because he's a little bit crazy, but he's just <laughs> a really intelligent guy that For seemed sure. to be. On uh, on top of cannabis uh, in every aspect. What did where did you get in touch with him? Um, I just got his contacts through a previous employee, sure. um, who passed along his information, and then mm -hmm. we just got in touch and started talking. And then I was like, wow, this is a good good um, relationship. Good connect. Yeah. And uh, so, how many different doctors does Cure Leaf deal with? You deal with a lot of different doctors, correct? I mean, me personally, yes. I deal with over a hundred. Really? Um, yeah. So, so you've probably dealt with people like Austin who have, you know, had a bunch of doctors around that maybe didn't do it the right way. Did you run into those situ the situations? Because it seems like Austin does it the right way. Um, not necessarily mm -hmm. um, because we're not, you know, it's not in the dispensary. We just make sure that things are being followed. Correct. You know, leading up to it. Correct. So, and it's not really up to me. Mm -hmm. um, you don't really push people anywhere. No. You guys are kind of after the fact. After you get right. your card, you you worry about it after that. Exactly. Yeah, and that, and that's where we, what we want to do here with, you know, a plant power. We want to bring the education, sure. and because as somebody who is becoming a voice for cannabis in this area, I get asked a lot, how do I get my medical card? Yeah. So. I mean, I'm trying to push people the right way. I'm going to be pushing people to Austin, obviously. And uh, what I want to do is I want to get somebody to get a GoPro on their head and kind of go in there and go through the whole, you know, uh, process and show people how easy it is. Yeah. Because the average person out there says to me, well, how do I get my card? I, I know I'm not eligible. Sure. And, and they're all nervous. And well, what can I do? And I know it's going to be waiting for so long. I mean, I don't know if there's an easier process of anything in, in, that I've ever been through it's in my easy. life. Yeah, I even, I mean, I spend time at events talking to a lot of non-patients, sure. mm -hmm. um, even last few weeks, just 
having that conversation on it's it's so simple mm. it's very easy you know you have that um appointment you talk to the doctor and mm. by the time you leave you can come shopping well, if you're it. at least i mean of course if you're a florida resident it's you know a little bit to that but it's fairly easy it's sweat free you're not there you know you you're not having to go through a whole analysis <laughs> <laughs> i love it now you know I don't get a chance to go to as many events as, as you do. You know, I'm trying to live vicariously for yourself. Um, <laughs> you have some events coming up. I think Rockville. Yeah. Where, where is Rockville? When is that? Daytona. Daytona. Yeah. And what is it exactly? It's the biggest rock festival in they the nation. Crazy bands going yeah, there. Yeah, Kiss, Guns N' Roses, oh my goodness. Um, Nine Inch Nails, uh, lots of other ones yep. I can't think of right now, mm -hmm. but it's huge. I saw the flyer and I was shocked at how many different rock bands were on that so cure leaf is going to be part this part of that and you're going to be yeah. hanging out in daytona yeah we're going to have a booth uh -huh. um we're going to even have like a commercial like is it play. in the speedway yes really yeah yeah we were there in november it's past november wow that was cool so they have like a big stage set up in there like i've been to daytona i went went to daytona 500 one time didn't watch any racing whatsoever <laughs> i don't remember most of it but uh it was uh it was uh the festivities were cool mm -hmm. uh but like the i don't know like the the verbiage, the in infield or whatever. Yeah, I don't even know. Just it's I okay. don't know, but I just it's people like to party there now. That's a that's a nice place to party. Now is it anybody can go to Rockville? I think so. Okay, because yeah. I might I might just. Come I mean, I, actually, yeah. I thought people brought their kids so. to Rockville. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's different. Well, because people were camping, you can camp. So people would camp sure. and do like a, you know, go in and okay. they can just go out. So I, yeah. Why not? I mean, why not? If you're from a different state or whatever, you know, you, you can bring your kids over there. You For bring sure. the tents and you kind of hang out and, you know, you're, you're in, I guess you can control your own environment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Good stuff. Well, well, good luck at Rockville. Thank you. Uh, it's too far for me. I'm not going to be able to make it, unfortunately. But uh, we'll definitely be talking here uh, in the next uh, couple of days about the event we have coming up. And yep. we're going to be doing some sexy things at the uh, Dignitary Kava House. It's going to be exciting. We're going to figure out ways to collab. And uh, mm -hmm, we're going to mm -hmm. get you on here about once a month and mm -hmm. tell us about all the specials going on. Yeah. And all the different cool stuff happening at uh, at the uh, at uh, Cure Leaf. For sure. And we got Smokey here hanging out. Look. <laughs> Say hi, Smokey. Wave. Wave. Wave to the people. Wave to the people. It's like, what? I think Smokey's been indulging already. Yeah. Anyways, we appreciate you guys and gals listening in. Uh, we come to you guys every single week on the Plant Power Podcast. And uh, we're here to try to bring education to the masses about uh, plants and, uh, and cannabis and kava and kratom and veganism and the, and the whole nine yards. So we appreciate you guys and girls listening in and uh, have a wonderful week. And uh, get out there and smoke something delicious. I know I will. Peace out.